Hello everyone. Welcome to the channel Omni Gyan. Today we are going to learn a poem, The Village Schoolmaster. This is for class 10 as per uh, Meghalaya Board of School Education syllabus. Uh, please refer to page 200 of the textbook for the poem. And for the biography of the poet, uh, the name of the poet is Oliver Goldsmith. For the biography of the poet, you can refer to page number 202 of your textbook. Okay, there's a very short biography of the poet, Oliver Goldsmith. Uh, I'll just read out uh, uh, one or two lines from his biography. Oliver Goldsmith was born in the year 1728 and he died in the year 1774. He was the son of an Irish clergyman and was born in Palismore, Ireland. Okay, he graduated from Trinity College, Dublin in 1749. Uh, so for the rest, I think you can go through your textbook again, page 202. Now, before we start the poem, let us learn uh, the origin of the poem, The Village Schoolmaster. Uh, if you look at the screen, you can see that this poem is an excerpt from a longer poem by Goldsmith called The Deserted Village. So this poem that you are learning in your textbook is actually a very short poem. And the name of that long, that long poem is The Deserted Village. Okay, The name of that long poem is The Deserted Village. And from that long poem, The Deserted Village, this short version has been considered for your class 10 syllabus okay so this poem which is an excerpt from a longer poem by goldsmith uh, called the deserted village uh, it conveys the speaker's sentiments about a teacher okay so this uh, poem is about a teacher actually it's about a village teacher okay a teacher who teaches in a village the name the title of the poem itself suggests that uh, this particular teacher works in a village school that is why the village school master okay so the word village again it is uh, the word village in the title it clearly shows it clearly suggests that the poem is set in a rural area rural means village okay so the poem is set in a rural area and probably where the speaker speaker here is Oliver Goldsmith okay uh, possibly the speaker had lived in this village okay and he was also taught uh, in that same school where this teacher worked so the poet is actually uh, you know sharing his own experience uh, of his school life okay that he had a teacher who used to teach in his school and uh, you know what are the qualities that the teacher possessed the character of the teacher the style of teaching of that teacher okay everything is being uh, everything is being described by the poet Oliver Goldsmith in this poem okay so this poem, in one way we can say that this poem is somewhat autobiographical, okay, because it shares the experience, the life of the poet and by the poet himself, okay, as we know that autobiography is somebody who writes uh, about his own life, that is autobiography. And biography is, and biography is somebody else writes the life story of someone else, okay. See, if I write the life history of Mahatma Gandhi, it will be biography. But Mahatma Gandhi has written his about his own life, that is autobiography. Okay. Anyways, let's come back to the poem. So, uh, what we see is that uh, this uh, poem that you learn in the textbook is actually an excerpt, just a portion from that long poem, The Deserted Village, and it is about a village school master. Okay. So in the first two lines, you have to open your textbook, okay? Please open your textbook uh, when you hear the explanation. In the first two lines, the speaker mentions exactly where the school was located, okay? And we can easily understand because it is the village school master, so possibly, not possibly, but we are sure that the setting, setting means the location of the uh, poem is actually the village, okay? So in the first two lines, the speaker mentions exactly where the school was located okay in the first two lines I'll just scroll down here I have the poem here you can see your textbook also beside yon straggling 
fence that skirts the way with blossomed firs unprofitable gay so the first two lines itself suggests that the location of the poem could be a village i'll tell you why the fence that you see okay besides please uh, see your textbook beside yon straggling fence okay the fence is dilapidated see the fence beside which the school building was situated is described as straggling straggling means something which is dilapidated almost destroyed you know the fence fence means the boundary walls okay the boundary walls <coughs> the boundary walls have become cracked and it is probably leaning over it means that the boundary walls have become very weak okay the boundary walls have become very weak and there are plenty of cracks in the boundary wall that means the building has become quite old even the boundary walls have also become very old that is why it has been described as dilapidated and it is also bending leaning okay because the building has become very weak all right and the road leading towards the towards and past the school was lined with flowers which were unprofitably gay now what do you mean by unprofitably gay we are uh, analyzing the first two lines okay beside yon straggling fence that means near the uh, near the dilapidated near the cracked boundary wall okay you have line of beautiful flowers uh, near the school building near the fence but those flowers remains unprofitably gay that means nobody appreciates or praises the flowers those beautiful flowers okay see the phrase suggests that the flowers that were blooming beautifully were not being admired or appreciated so you see there are beautiful flowers growing near the school building but nobody is admiring those flowers or no one is even appreciating them okay nobody appreciates or admires the beautiful flower that grows Uh, that is growing near the school fence okay now let us learn some more lines and then we'll go to the explanation there in his noisy mansion skilled to rule the village master taught his little school this means what the meaning is the lines are very simple to understand okay so in the following couplet the speaker refers to the school building itself as noisy mansion now why the building has been referred to as a noisy mansion 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 is a building okay and noisy which is full of noise okay so see any school is filled with plenty of noises what noises noises of the teacher noises maximum noises of the students only when the teacher is not in the class students tend to talk they tend to laugh they tend to crack jokes with one another okay so in this noisy mansion <coughs> i'm sorry so in this noisy mansion uh and this noise i mention it is because it is bustling with the activity of teaching and learning even when a teacher is in the class he sometimes cracks he or she sometimes cracks jokes uh you know interacts with the students students interact with the teacher so in the classroom also there are a lot of noises but we don't call those noises actually those are the teaching and learning activity the the the, the you know the, the activities that happens in the classroom and there is a plenty of talking debating arguments it's all a part of teaching and learning okay so but still it has been described as noisy because students are sometimes uh, not in discipline so the teacher has to manage everything and this village teacher this village school master he is equipped to manage he is an expert equip means expert he is equipped to manage and manage a class and teach his lessons there the term master denotes the respect he enjoyed so you see that there will always be noises in a classroom and uh, this village teacher is so expert that he can manage his class very nicely okay and he can also teach his lessons there by managing the classroom you see sometimes what happens when a teacher is teaching in the class when a teacher is teaching in the class there are students especially back benchers uh, who pay little less attention and they keep talking to one another or passing notes to one another okay so it is uh in this context that the poet is saying that the village teacher the village school master is so expert that he can manage all those problems in the classroom and he can gain attention of the students okay and teach his lessons 
and the term master why it is village school master it could ha have also been the village school teacher no the term master here means that he is respected by everybody okay master master means somebody who is very knowledgeable somebody who is very experienced somebody who is very intellectual okay so the term master the poet uses the term master and not teacher here uh, to you know show that uh, this particular village teacher he enjoyed so much respect plenty of respect so speaker goes on to describe the teacher's character so uh, you know in the rest of the lines we will be learn will be learning the teacher's character the village teacher's character then his style of teaching etc etc each description is rounded off in a rhyming couplet a rhyming couplet is what you see if you look at the poem very nicely though this is not important but you must know this thing okay take the example of way it rhymes with gay take the example of rule it rhymes with school take the example of view it rhymes with new trace with face and it goes on glee with he okay it goes on okay so this is called see the last word in each line is matching with the following word okay way gay rule school okay this is called a rhyming couplet okay the, the last word rhymes with the last word of the next line okay so this is the rhyming pattern actually <coughs> anyways let us learn more about let us read the poem first okay some lines and then we'll go to explanation again so you understood this already so there in his noisy mansion in this noisy school he manages to teach uh, his lessons he is very expert in managing the class and teaches lessons and the village school master taught in his little school so the school building is very little uh, we can easily understand it's a village school so the school building is not very big like most of the school buildings are in a city or a urban area anyways next line a man severe he was severe here been strict okay strict a man severe he was and stern to view i knew him well and every truant knew okay severe means he is strict stern also is strict okay i knew him well and every truant knew okay now what does this mean we'll go to the explanation again so the teacher was very strict and he had a stern a very strict look look about him okay so the teacher was very strict in character okay you remember character and style of teaching we we'll learn now so he was a very strict teacher and he was always very he looked very serious always his face had a very serious look the speaker stage sat he knew him well which means that he had an in-depth understanding of his teacher and could probably read into his expressions and gestures you see when the speaker oliver goldsmith says that he knows the teacher very nicely that means he had had personal interaction with the teacher see unless a student has a has personal interactions or personal experiences with the teacher he will not have an in-depth understanding he will never know uh, in deep the character of the teacher okay so it seems that almost all the students had uh, an in-depth understanding that means all the teachers had oh i'm sorry all the students had an in-depth knowledge about the teacher through their own personal experiences that means we can also say that the teacher mixed with his students outside the school teaching learning activities okay it is just a guess we will learn whether the guess is correct or not and they all could read into his expressions and gestures now what could it mean okay well let us learn a little later this familiarity could also have been the result of the many personal and individual encounters he had had with his educator that is what i already said that oliver goldsmith might have had some personal encounter with this teacher okay see unless you personally mix with a teacher how will you know what kind of character a teacher possesses okay so somewhere we can understand that not only oliver oliver goldsmith but many of his friends had personal 
experience with the teacher personal encounter with the teacher that is why they could have an in-depth understanding the moment a teacher enters a class the student would look at his face and he would immediately understand whether the teacher is in a good or a bad mood okay i hope you understood now the word truant the word truant implies that the speaker may have been one of those who deliberately missed classes now truant generally means a student who remains absent without any reason okay so maybe the speaker oliver goldsmith might also have been a truant who might have missed many classes so might have been absent without any reason and maybe his teacher had scolded him many a times okay so who deliberately so the speaker could have deliberately missed classes and he had confronted he had been confronted by the teacher about his misdemeanors okay that the teacher might have asked him that you were absent for a long time and there is no apparent, apparent reason that you were absent where is your application okay uh, what is the reason of your absence uh so these kind of enc encounters uh oliver goldsmith might have had with the uh with the teacher okay now further aspects about the teacher's personality indicate that he had an expressive face and that his people could easily read his mood as a result okay let us read some of the lines from the poem okay well had the boarding tremblers learned to trace the day's disasters in his morning face full well they laughed with counterfeited glee at all his jokes for many a joke had he so from here to here these four lines okay i'll explain these four lines to you let's scroll up once again please have your textbooks with you while you are listening to the explanations okay so further aspects about the teacher's personality indicate that he had an expressive face he means here the teacher okay he here is the teacher so the teacher had an had a very expressive face that means the people could read easily his mood as a result you see if a teacher enters the class in a very serious mood and his face is very serious looking very serious you cannot say that the teacher is in a happy mood anyone can say that no i think the teacher is not in a good mood how by his facial expression okay they would for example know that a certain ominous look spelled trouble coming here ominous look means say a teacher comes inside the class looking very serious okay looking very serious so students can easily guess that the teacher is not in a good mood and especially the disobedient students the indisciplined students will become attentive in the class suddenly uh, right after looking at the face of the teacher and they will immediately guess and the guess would be absolutely correct that the teacher is not in a good mood because his face looks very serious his expressions are very serious okay so they would be trembling in anticipation so they would be shaking in fear anticipation and fear of what was to come so obviously you see any teacher who enters the class in a very bad mood all the students would be afraid that if they do anything wrong in the class the teacher would simply come and punish so everybody would become attentive uh you know and uh, pay full attention to the teacher's explanations okay so it is clear that the teacher also had a good sense of humor so after it is not that the teacher is always serious okay no teacher is 24 into 7 into 365 serious sometimes he is in a good mood too okay and when a teacher is in a good mood he tells many jokes in the class <clears throat> uh this is the same case in the poem also the teacher would be sometimes telling jokes in the class okay it is clear that the teacher also had a good sense of humor for the teacher had a very good sense of humor for he would tell many jokes to the students now did all the jokes produce laughter no all the jokes did not produce laughter but the students had to laugh okay even if the jokes were very damp uh did not produce much laughter even then the students would have to pretend that yes the joke was fantastic and everybody would laugh okay they would do acting actually 
it is not that they were laughing uh, seriously they would do acting the students would feign feign means pretend do acting the students would feign pleasure at his funny stories and laugh at them probably to avoid being reprimanded that means the students would show the teacher that yes sir your joke or yes ma'am your joke was very funny and then uh, we all felt like laughing you know falling on falling flat on floors and laughing like anything okay because if the students do not laugh the teacher might again punish them that why didn't you laugh at my joke i had said a very good joke and you did not laugh uh, so you are all uh, stupid and foolish so you know fearing this kind of thing uh, fearing scolding from the teacher the student would go on laughing go on laughing go on laughing okay do acting okay so this is quite funny anyways let us go through some more lines and then uh, we'll learn their explanations also so full well the busy whisper circling round conveyed the dismal tidings when he frowned yet he was kind or if severe in not yet he was kind or if severe in not the love he bore to lear learning was in fault okay so from full well the busy whisper to the love he bore to learning was in fault this four lines okay please mark in your textbooks we are going to learn the explanation of this four lines let's scroll up to see the explanations so word would quickly spread around the classroom about impending trouble whenever the teacher scowled that means whenever the teacher was in a bad mood and the teacher entered the class okay so all the students would whisper to one another that sir is very angry today or madam is very angry today let us not talk okay let us be serious so this kind of whispers would go around the class and uh, all the students would warn one another that the teacher is not in a good mood so let us not let us not uh, be indisciplined let us pay attention so the speaker provides a contrast to the teacher's strict demeanor not only by stating that he was humorous at times but also mentioning that he was kind so you see that it is not that the teacher was always strict it is not that the teacher always said jokes the teacher was kind also so the speaker says that the teacher was also very kind okay the teacher was also very kind to them here in the line i'll i'll just show you the line conveyed the dismal tidings when he frowned yet he was kind okay so sometimes he was kind also to the students now kind in what way it could be many ways you see kind could be maybe the teacher had helped some students uh, you know uh, with something not only education but maybe even personal help also okay there are various kinds of helps not only education uh, so the teacher might have helped many students in many things with many things helping them with money or help helping them you know uh, helping them with studies and and many more things okay so exactly what kind of kindness the teacher has showed is not mentioned in the poem but anyways uh, we can easily understand a teacher can help a student in many ways okay even counseling also if a student has got some problems in the family he would approach the teacher personally and say sir can you provide me any or ma'am can you provide me any solution to this personal problem and the teacher would a uh, very intellectually solve his problem okay or at least give him some advice so this kind of kindness also the teacher might have shown but that is not very sure but we may assume okay we may assume anyways let's continue the speaker states that if one should take it to the extreme it could be said that the teacher's greatest flaw was that he loved learning too much now this line is quite confusing actually many would say how can learning be a fault say i want to learn guitar i want to learn uh, a language a greek language okay so you see that uh, you know uh, it, this line is very confusing because uh, many things that how can learning be a flaw flaw means fault okay how can learning be a fault learning can never be a fault but here it is not that that the teachers uh, thirst in learning new new things is actually his fault it is not that the explanation is that actually the teacher is very much interested in learning new new things okay language mathematics these and that and he wants his students to pay equal interest in learning those things okay this is actually the fault of the teacher which the which the uh, speaker says the speaker says that uh, you know it is not only studies but uh, 
uh, students can be interested in many other things say somebody is interested in sports somebody inst mm -hmm. is interested in uh, you know music somebody is interested in some other things but the teacher but according to the teacher it is education which is most important and everybody like the teacher should pay equal importance to education and equal importance to learning new new things okay so this was actually the biggest fault of the teacher he wanted to impose his own uh, learning techniques on the students okay so this is where the teacher was actually making a mistake okay so this is what the speaker is telling in the poem or if severe in or the love he bore to learning was in fault okay so this passion of learning new new things is actually not his fault but he wanted the students also to learn new new things in the similar passion that was actually the teacher's fault which the speaker says in the poem okay anyways let us scroll down i hope you understood let us scroll down <coughs> okay the village all declared how much she knew it was certain t was certain is it was certain actually okay we have an apostrophe in the beginning and then t it means it okay so it was certain he could write and cipher to cipher means mathematics okay cipher means mathematics so it was certain he could write and cipher to lands he could measure terms and tides passage and even the story ran he could gauge okay so these four lines we are going to learn again please mark in your textbook these are the four lines we are going to learn the explanation okay so this is the explanation the schoolmaster was not only much admired and respected by his students but was evidently also looked up by the village residents this line okay this line now what is the meaning of this line this line means that the teacher the schoolmaster was respected not only by the students but in fact the whole the entire village respected the schoolmaster for his knowledge everybody seemed to have praise for his great knowledge so the schoolmaster had great knowledge what knowledge what kind of knowledge did the schoolmaster possess see it was a known fact that in the village he could write he could write very well he could do mathematics he could predict weather patterns and tides okay it was also assumed that he was an accurate surveyor who could determine borders easily okay this line this line you see he could gauge he could gauge means he could determine borders border you know i think you understand what are borders okay so he could gauge means he could determine the borders easily okay so these are the qualities that he that the school master possess so the school master could write very well he could do mathematics he could predict weather patterns he could predict tides okay it was juar bhata tides okay it was also assumed that he was an accurate surveyor who could gauge who could determine borders very easily see how much knowledge he possessed and that is why he was respected by not only by the students by by the entire village in fact so it is apparent that he could also debate intelligently so he was a great debater okay he was great in argument he could debate very intelligently very intellectually and be involved in discussions with the village person p a r s o n okay who is a person who is a person a person is actually a church man okay a person is actually a church man okay so he would sometimes go on a debate with the village even a person who is a church man he is also very respected person okay and uh, he was also respected by the entire village but if you compare the knowledge the intellectuality the intelligence of the church man person and this village school master this village school school master was actually more intelligent is cons was considered to be more intelligent than this church man then this person okay so he would often uh, go on a debate with this church man and sometimes he would be defeated also the teacher seemed to be a fierce opponent in such discourse for he would continue arguing even a point even after he had already lost the dispute okay even after the village school master had lost the debate okay see here for even though vanquished he could still argue 
while words of learned length and thundering sound amazed the gazing rustics ranged around and still the gazed and still the wonder grew that one small head could carry all he knew okay from here okay from here now in arguing to 1 2 3 4 5 6 this last six lines in arguing to the person owned his skill okay so the person also had skilled uh, also had skills but uh the village school master vanquished means defeated the, so even after being defeated okay even after being defeated even after he had lost the debate at the hands of the church man he would still go on arguing okay he would still go on arguing arguing and not accept defeat at all okay not accept defeat at all which was very good actually okay so he would go on arguing the teacher seemed to be a fierce opponent in such discourse for he would cont- uh, he would continue arguing even a point after he had already lost the dispute so even after he had lost the debate he would still go on talking and talking and talking and arguing okay and the village school master would use very difficult difficult words and emotional language emotive language to sound convincing and impress the poorly educated village folk okay so the village people were uh, not much educated they were you know poor and uneducated at the same time so the village school master would go on using very difficult words okay and he would be using emotional language also to impress the village people so the village people at the end even if the school master had lost the debate but still the village folk would stand up and you know clap hands give him standing ovations and praise him for his intellectuality because the village school master would be using difficult words and emotional language so these are all the qualities of the village school master so people in this rural community in the village community were in awe awe here means surprise okay so people in the rural community were very much surprised you know they wondered that how could a teacher how could this teacher know so much how could this teacher have so much knowledge and they could not understand they could not understand see that one small head last line of the poem that one small head could uh, carry all he knew and they wondered that such a small head the village school master had such a small head and in that small head how come it is possible to contain so much knowledge okay so these people the village people are very simple actually okay are very simple and they sometimes wonder that in the small head of the village school master how come such great knowledge is there inside okay how uh, great knowledge is there inside the head of that inside the small head of that village school master okay <coughs> inside the head of the village school master okay so this is all about the poem this is all about the poem okay i hope i hope you have understood the poem very well let us just uh, do a very short summary okay very short summary okay now here first of all we learn that the poem is this poem that you learn is actually a very short poem and it has been taken from a very long poem by goldsmith called the deserted village okay the deserted village and uh, the poet is speaking about a village school teacher who used to teach in a village school all right and we also learn that uh, the teacher could manage his class very well and teach his lessons he would manage the indisciplined uh, the disobedient students in the class okay we also learn the character of the teacher he had a great personality we also see that uh, the teacher was uh, you know everybody would understand if the teacher's mood was not good through his facial expressions okay and then we go on to learn that the teacher was respected not only by the school students but he was respected uh by the village people also okay then we also learn that uh, uh he was very kind he was not only kind he was kind he cracked jokes in the class but at the same time he was strict also so these three qualities he possessed actually he was strict he was a very strict teacher uh he had a very good sense of humor he used to tell jokes in the class but at the same time he was very kind to the students also then next we also learn that he had plenty of knowledge he had plenty of knowledge in various subjects and what are the subjects the subjects were that the see here he could write very well he could do mathematics he could predict weather patterns he could predict tides 
and uh, he could also accurately survey uh, and determine borders okay so he could gauge gauge is the word that means he was an accurate surveyor who could determine borders very easily and then uh, the other quality is that he could debate very intelligently he would use difficult words emotional language even after he was defeated by the church man he would still go on talking using difficult words he would uh, use emotional language and the uneducated poor village folks the villagers would stand up and clap you know for the village school master because they thought that he was very intelligent and he actually was very intelligent okay and finally this is quite funny also and this explains the simplicity the simple life of the village people they always wondered okay they all they were always in surprise that how could this village teacher know so much this village teacher has such a small head and in this small head how could uh, so much of knowledge be there inside this small head okay knowledge of mathematics knowledge of writing knowledge of uh, measuring tides knowledge of predicting forecasting weather uh, knowledge of determining borders knowledge of debating how could so much of knowledge contain in this small head and there is where the poem ends okay there is where the poem ends so this is all about the village school master i hope all of you have understood and if there is any uh, confusion if there is anything that you have not understood any line or any word or any explanation that is uh, that that you have not understood feel free to comment in the comment section of the channel okay feel free to comment in the comment section of the channel i will be i will try to uh, clarify um, those problems that you face okay so that's all for now thank you so much and please subscribe uh, to the channel uh, like and share the video thank you so much